out there in watch land welcome to my channel i'm jd um, and this is uh, jd watch my service so today we're going to be doing a very comprehensive video it's part two actually on cleaning an old fake swiss pocket watch using the pearl uh, watch cleaning machine now you can see in the pamphlet on the side there um, this came with the machine uh, there's um Basically, you get the uh, machine itself. You get the, uh, and you'll see this later. You get the uh, setup here. This is not the, the one I bought. Mine was the Supreme, which also has controls up here, which is nice. You get uh, three jars. One jar is your is your cleaning jar. Then you get two rinse jars, and you've got a heating chamber here. And then you end up with a. Uh, if you buy the Supreme, you end up with two of these complete baskets, right? So, and the complete baskets. There's a one of the baskets here and these baskets clamp on to the bottom of where the motor is in that area you'll see that as well later on and um, and that the parts go into the basket now first thing I'll do is uh, put those parts into the basket and get ready and then I'll end up going down stairs to my basement where I have the cleaning machine attached in my little shop area um, and I also have the cleaning fluids down there so and these are com com combustive fluids I believe the term is so basically don't smoke big cigars while you're cleaning watches it's never good a, a good thing to smoke a cigar while you're cleaning a watch so let's get on with it first of all I'd like to thank my wife Josie for being the camera woman of this particular video because she is needed to get all the close-ups and stuff while I'm working the machine so I hope you really enjoy this video um, if you're up in Canada and you want me to service a watch then email me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com if you're in the US and you want me to service a watch uh, it's a little trickier so we'll have to email each other back and forth um, because there's the border and when you send things across the border sometimes the the border folks want to put a, uh, a bounty on that we'll call it a bounty so it's, it's actually a brokerage charge that's put on the uh, item because they sometimes believe I've bought it which I haven't so so it's a tricky thing to do and we have to talk about that so so I hope you enjoy this video um, and let's get at it and to it to it and at it you gotta tune your attitude in and of course I always do this but before I start it's like when you watch those movies where they're defusing a bomb and they say cut the red wire but before you do that here's what I want you to do Anyway, so these are the, the, the pamphlet that came with it and some of the, some more instructions. And it's here, it says, fill jar one with any good make of solution and, and the second and third jars with petrol. So petrol meaning lighter fluid, naphtha, something like this. So don't listen to this. There's, pro, there's professional cleaning fluids that you can get. Zenith, check out the Zenith cleaning fluids. So you can buy Zenith cleaning fluids and a zenith rinse as well instead of pouring gas in this thing and causing yourself a fire so and it says to fill the jars up around two-thirds full well the jar actually has a line on it so you can fill it up to to where that line is there's a little kind of marker and you need to do that because when you put the motor unit down um, you you put the motor unit down seals on top of the jar and then you push the uh, the baskets into the uh, into the into the cleaning fluid so that's how that works that's why you do that um, and it just tells you how to take the uh, part, the watch parts apart, and blah blah blah, and then immerse it in the jar. Um, it's saying you rotate the baskets in the jar uh, one uh, for two to three minutes. So, which I did. I think I did five minutes in that jar. I just let it run for five minutes. You raise it up, and then you let it spin, and you'll see that in the video. And then you put it in the second jar, and you do the same thing for two or three minutes uh, that's probably good enough then you raise it up again it throws off the uh, the, 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 uh, the cleaning or the rinsing fluid in that case right and the first time you do it you let it spin to clean off the cleaning fluid and then the uh, third jar is another another rinse you jump back into the swimming pool for the third jar you get everything cleaned off uh, pick it up and then you put it into the heating chamber so they say to turn your heating chamber on before you start this because you're going to heat it at low speed for five minutes well this device has got a pretty, tri pretty tricky rheostat so putting it on low speed is is very tricky so you just have to turn it on and just sort of inch it away so I might 
I may flip the rheostat on this because it's just it's just way too uh, tricky now. So now because my the device is made for 230 volts, I believe, and I don't think they did much to make it into a 110 volt device. In fact, when you open up the electronics in the back, there's a breaker in there for for 233 amps. Um, so the breaker is not for 110. So they just obviously didn't do anything. I also had to re uh, change the plug on the end because it was a type uh, D or type B rather type B plug and I had to change it to a type D I think that's the way it is for India versus North America so it was a, a plug from India so but uh, anyway so let's watch this uh, cleaning process and uh, hopefully you're going to get some you know information on how to use this machine that's uh, useful for you thanks all right I'm down here in my basement this is where all fun Frankenstein stuff happens this is the pearl watch cleaning machine here and um I've got the uh, the uh, cleaning fluid here, and I've got the two rinse fluids in the jars here, um, and then I've got the uh, the cleaning fluid is is this one here, waterless formula 67 waterless cleaning fluid. I put gloves on to deal with this. Not sure if that's necessary, but it does say things. Try not to contact the skin and all kinds of other things. Um, so don't drink it as well. Um, and then I've got the final final rinse here, which is the uh, dries bright final rinse. Uh, all this says says warning combustible. That makes me a little nervous, but but I guess they use these things in cleaning machines all the time. So just don't uh, light a match near this. And I've got my basket here, as I showed you earlier, and this is a, a basket full of watch parts. So the first thing I need to do is attach this basket to the cleaning machine. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to attach this basket here to the cleaning machine like this, and it goes in like this, like so, and then turns. This could be a little tricky here, but it locks into place. See how well I'm doing this? There we go. So it locks into place like that. So just make sure it's locked here that you don't have an issue. And this is a cleaning fluid, so what I'm going to do is go through a uh, around two to three minutes of cleaning, and then two to three minutes of rinse, rinse, and then I'm going to turn on the uh, the heater when I'm back here, and that's going to be able to uh, to uh, dry the parts that that are in the cage. So I've got to drop this in. This is the first my first try at this, by the way. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to basically lower this into the uh i gotta lower it down like this let me see how do you do this you just push down it's a little bit tough to push down and the cage goes all the way down so i gotta pull this all the way up and out of the way and then lower this all the way down I'm just trying to lower this here but it's fighting me so i think that should do there and I believe I just tighten this like that. And I just want to make sure this goes all the way into the cleaning fluid. And it should go down a little more, right? Okay. Okay, now, so we've got the, um, it's dipped all the way down. I had to go pretty far with this. So it's, uh, it's all the way inside the cleaning fluid right now. And now, and I had, basically, you pull this up like this, and then you push it down, right? And that's going right through the motor. So I want to set the timer here and I'll set that for, turn this off and I'll set that for, let's say five minutes of cleaning like that. Motor has to be on. So if you look up here, there's a switch here that says motor on. So I got to turn the motor on first like that. I'll set the timer a bit here. So the motor's on, the heater's off and it's in forward position. So now I'll do it. A little nervous about all this, by the way. So let's just get this thing going a bit. There we go. So now I don't have to run that super fast in the cleaning position, but that should be enough to agitate it nicely. So we'll just let that run for five minutes and then we'll continue after. All right, I sped it up just a little bit. There we go, the basket's under there, so the parts are being spun around and cleaned right now. There you go. So the next thing I'm gonna do is then raise this up 
um, out of the jar and then let it splash, let it rinse off. Um, I may have too much cleaning fluid in here, which could, co could cause me another issue. So we'll see what happens. So when this uh, hits, uh, this hits the mark, um, it'll turn off the machine completely. So now the machine just turned off. So I want to lift this up like this out of the liquid and then spin it freely so it can just shake off some of the cleaning fluid. Right. So I'll just, I can, I've got to turn the timer on to do that though. You can't use the motor without the timer on. So I'll just turn, turn the rheostat down here, put the timer on for a few minutes and then just start this, turn this on and start it spinning. So this is just spinning, uh, there we go. I think I've got a little bit too much liquid in here because this is uh, this foaming up and it's not spinning off nicely, but that's fine because it'll just do that in the rinsing solution. So it'll, it'll be able to finish this off in the rinsing solution. So there we go. So that's done. So I spun it off a bit. Now I got to take it out of the thing. So what I do here is I loosen this, right? And it should effectively spring back up. I was going to say nice and slowly, but that wasn't that very slow, was it? Let me see if I can just lower this just a bit more and spin it again. So the spring action on this is really hard. It's, it's heavy spring action. I'm not going to bother doing that. I'll just take the lid off the end here like that. And I'll dunk that and get it ready. So now I've got the uh, watch parts in the uh, cleaning solution. The first rinse, actually, not the, not the cleaning, but the rinse, the first rinse. So that's in there now. Um, and I've uh, dunked it in. I'll show you the uh, process for the second one after. So now we're going to do the final rinse here. I already did this rinse here, so I just need to move this over um, to this side here. And I'll show you the spinning of the basket after. But what I want to do is lower this now into here, right? So it takes a bit of work to lower these, by the way, just letting you know. So lower that in there and tighten that up <laughs> like this. And then if you look here, you can see that I'm dropping this canister into the liquid like that. So basically you fill the liquid up to the line here that's on the canister. And that works. And then up here, I'll turn the motor on, make sure the rheostat's off, turn the motor on. And then I'll flip this to five minutes like that. And then I'll turn the rheostat on and this should start spinning. And there we go. So we'll just let that thing run for uh, five minutes. And then I'm gonna show you how I spin it off after I'm finished. And this Pearl uh, watch cleaning machine, very good, it comes from India. It says 220, 230 volts um, and 0.5 amps, but um, I live up here in Canada, so uh, they, they stuck a tag on it that said 110, so I took the tag off because I don't need the tag on, but if it's 110, it's slightly over one amp. Um, and just to make sure I didn't have an issue here with the wiring, I bought myself a circuit breaker here, and it's switched, and it's a surge protector as well. Um, and I also soldered on the, uh, the right type of cord for, uh, for North America because it had a cord that was a, a type B cord and I had to put on a type D cord so to make sure that was uh, conforming with it. So there you go. So I'm now going to turn the heater on. Hopefully no breakers tripped. So the light goes on because the heater's on. So I've got to turn the heater on before this is finished to get the heater up to speed. And... Um, you can see I'm in my basement in my corner here. So you don't want to probably don't want to do this upstairs where you're going to eat. So the heater lights on. So this will heat up the chamber here for the final process of, uh, of actually, um, you know, drying the, the parts. So, so we'll let the heater heat it up and we'll get right back and we'll show you how to spin this off. All right. So now we're going to spin this off. So all I need to do is pull this up out of the cleaning fluid. And make sure it's all the way up 
and out so it doesn't uh, affect it so and this is the yeah my wife just said it's the rinsing fluid she's right it's the final rinse so i just want to spin this off so what i'll do is i'll turn this down because i'm not sure what it'll do outside of the fluid it's going to behave differently and i'll spin this off for five minutes or for a few minutes it doesn't have to go that long i don't think to spin it off and let's just turn this up a bit and get to see if it starts spinning and it's, it's a bit touchy on the spinning side so hang on I'm just gonna slower this turn this off for a second and can i lift this up some more yes i can so i'm gonna lift this up a bit more and then i'm gonna turn it on I'm spinning this off here. It's a little bit noisy, I think, because I've got the um, motor touching the jar here or something. I think the other jars are rattling. I think that probably is good enough for spinning it off. And now I have to turn off the um, turn off the motor. Like that. There we go. So that's off now. And what I'm going to do now is raise this up out of the way. Like that. And then I'm going to turn this. I've got to you gotta get it all the way to the top in order for it to line up and then it's aligned. And I'm not sure how hot this is. It's probably getting a bit hot here. Um, you probably have to turn this on, you know, ahead of time, but I'm gonna lower this into the, uh, into the heating chamber here very carefully. Like that, and then tighten it like this. <clears throat> the tightening is kind of odd on this thing here, but Anyway, and then I'm going to lower this down. Uh, I'm just going to bring it down and just bring it just up just a bit, just so it's not touching the bottom. And then I'll turn that on to, you know, I'm not sure how long this needs, but I'll just turn it on to five minutes. And I'll stop it if I need to. And just turn this on. And I'll just spin this, see if I can spin it slowly. Okay, so that's spinning slowly. So I just adjusted the rheostat, as they call it in engineering, and just to uh, make sure this, uh, this this rheostat's pretty touchy here. So just to spin it slowly in the heating machine here. So but that should dry the parts. So we'll let that go for uh, five minutes and we'll be right back. All right, so now we're gonna turn off, turn down the rheostat here, turn off the heater. You can hear things boiling down here, but maybe it's because the first time it's been used. Um, I'll just raise this up, the basket up out of the uh, heating chamber here. And there's little holes in the bottom here for this basket to, uh, to uh, there we go, just pull that up like that. Um, I can still hear some sizzling down there in the, in the chamber. So that's probably because it's a little bit of leftover liquid from this. Now, I'm not sure how hot this is, so I'm sure whether we want to grab this or not. Eh, it's not too bad. It's a little bit hot, but it's not terribly hot. So, so let's just let it cool off for a few seconds before I grab it. Um, and I'll turn off my circuit breaker up here. And that's the heating chamber down there. And there's the basket. Um, I'll just maybe I'll just take a cloth here so I can grab it like this and then take it off. Let's see, yeah, you can feel the heat from the heating chamber. Yeah, so if I turn this, if I pull this, let me see how I do this here. Pull it, push it up, push it up and then turn it. That's the trick. There we go. I think I got it. I think I can, I think I can. There we go. So there we go. 
So there's the watch parts all in there and I'm going to go upstairs now and take this apart and do a video on just to see how clean they are. So that's it. Alrighty, then I'm back from the basement, the Basamante. So here's the basket. Still a little tiny bit warm, but not much. Ooh, it scared me. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. Anyway, I need to take the baskets out here. So I'll leave the... I'll take the top one out because it's got the lid as well. Um, and just take the lid off here and then grab the basket and set that aside. And then take the next basket out. I could just grab it, grab it from the top and pull up. Yeah, that's pretty easy. That's the next basket. And then the final basket, I'll just walk this up from the top or from the bottom rather, and uh, grab the edge here. And there's the the final basket. So theoretically, this watch is a lot cleaner than it was. So <laughs> I'm going to just take the parts here and then take them out. Um, and have a look at them. So yeah, they look pretty clean. It's a pretty cool little cleaning machine. And we look at this here and see if there's any goop left in here. This is still, yeah, it's still retaining a bit of heat here. So yeah, that uh, worked quite well and uh, dried everything off nicely. So there's no problem with it being dry or not. So. And you can take the uh, the plate, like the, the top part, and just wipe that with Rodico as well. But this cleaned off a lot of stuff. So that's that's good. So that's these two. I'll put this basket back in place here. That's one. And then the second one here, let me look at the, uh, the barrel, because this is usually pretty mucky and it looks pretty good. So I think that did a good job there as well. Clean the barrel nicely. And mainspring barrel, and then I've got all these separate parts that were cleaned as well. And they look pretty good. Uh, yeah, these are old parts too, man. These are old parts. This is the, uh, the minute wheel there. Put that aside, and I had that one screw left, if you recall. So I think this was the screw. Yeah, this was the one screw that was on the plate. So this belongs over here. And then I've got this crazy winding mechanism here. That, uh, and it has, there's a, a cam here for, for this part there. And I've got the crazy winding mechanism screw, I'll call that. And it goes through, the, through this here. And it's all installed upside down. The barrel lid looks pretty good. Um, I'll have to check that because it still looks dirty, or not dirty, maybe just corroded. So there may be no way of getting rid of this corrosion. Yeah, I'm rubbing that with Rodico and nothing's coming off. So it's as clean as it's probably going to get because there's a lot of years of corrosion on these things. So that's the barrel lid. And then I've got the, um, yeah, this is the hour wheel and it looks okay. Put that there, and then that's the second basket, so I'll drop this down into the baskets. I can see a bit of stuff on the inside of the basket here. I'm not sure if that's, it looks like, looks like just dirt or something. So I may have to rinse these baskets out after as well, without parts in them. So I'll we'll just take that off to the side, and then I'll look at the wheel. So there's the fake jewel. Fake jewel, nice. So I know where that goes in the center here. That's a, where all fake jewels go. And I've got the second or third wheel here, probably the third wheel. And I got the second wheel here. Everything seems to stay in place when you put them in these baskets though, by the way. And I've got the escapement over here. Just like that and then if I look down I got a couple of case screws in here it's like Mr. Rogers here and then I've got the second hand spanky clean I'll put that over there on top of the uh, the crystal and I've got the minute hand also spanky clean 
and I got the hour hand also spanky clean and if I tap this I can see some dirt right there right so I'm trying not to get dirt on my mat here but I'll blow that off after but if I tap this down um, get any dirt out of that? No, not too much. So this came out when I first put the uh, all of the cage down. So there's the top here and I'll put that back on top like that. So I got this all set. So so there it is. That's the watch and it's, all the parts have been cleaned up. Let me just pick all this up with Rodico because I know I'm going to get a messy mat and then I'm going to have to cut a new one. And everybody, will, everybody will complain that my mat's messy. What are you doing with such a messy mat? This is what people are going to tell me. So that's it. So there's a pretty comprehensive um, video on the use of the Pearl Watchmaker's cleaning machine. Put that in view. There. There you go. So that was it. Um, thanks for watching my uh, video. Hopefully it was very useful. Um, that's quite an exciting thing to use your watch cleaning machine for the first time. You really don't know whether it's going to blow up on you or not. Uh, when you click those buttons and go, okay, is that heater going to throw the breaker? Is, uh, is the motor going to just spin out of control? What's going to happen? But all in all, it worked fairly well. Uh, as you saw, I removed all the parts from the basket. There was definitely no liquid remaining so the war the heating chamber you know got the get that uh, rinsing liquid out of there no issue at all so then the basket snapped on not too bad i just got to get used to using it that's all so um that's the video so thanks for watching my channel and um if you need to get back to me with any comments i love comments i'll sit down and answer each and every one of them and if you need to have your pocket watch serviced uh, you can reach me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com um, it's the winter coming up, so I've got time on the weekends to do a little bit of uh, watch work, which I had a problem with in the, uh, during the summer season um, due to this cottage that we se seem to go to. So anyway, so if you need any help, let me know. Um, and uh, thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe to my channel. If you've made it this long in the video, then hit the like, um, leave a comment. It's all good. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.